most of us know that Wikipedia is not the most reliable source. I mean, there's a lot of pages that are pretty openly biased. There's a lot of editing wars that go back and forth. That, you know, for those of you who've watched me for a long time, you know I almost never cite it. I, I'll sometimes use it as to inform my research, but I recognize that, generally speaking, there's probably huge swaths of information just missing from what I get there. So y you could imagine my surprise when I saw today that Archaeologist or anthropologist John Hoops, big time Graham Hancock detractor, was telling Forbes that they should be citing Wikipedia instead of the peer reviewed published papers that they were citing. So that's a little weird to see from a scientist now, isn't it? Now, as you can guess, there's a reason for that, which means there's a reason for me making this video. Hi, my name is Dan, and welcome to Debunking. A few days ago, Forbes posted an article on the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. That's the theory that a comet burst above the northern ice sheets around 12,800 years ago and caused all kinds of extinctions and whatnot. The article is shortened to the point. It lays out the basics of the hypothesis. The impact markers such as shock fractured quartz, platinum, and melt glass found in numerous places. The possibility of this killing off the megafauna of the period. Comparisons to the Tunguska event, and a second crater that may be part of the KP impact incident, the comet that wiped out the dinosaurs. The article is one-sided. It offers no criticism of the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis at all. It does just say that scientists have said that this happened. Now, this irritated many, including John Hoops, the aforementioned anthropologist that has a big problem with Graham Hancock and alternate history in general. He just freaked out about the whole thing, calling it, quote, journalistic malpractice claiming, quote, any journalist who writes about the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis without acknowledging it is highly controversial is grossly incompetent, and he expressed frustration with the paper's authors not using Wikipedia, even complaining that journalists are trained not to use Wikipedia. This really betrays the hypocritical nature of John's arguments when he's talking about pseudoscience. Now, first of all, there are dozens of articles from archaeology-friendly journalist outlets that just blast the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis with no concern for an even-keeled approach whatsoever. Hoops specifically complained this article does not present any alternative opinion from someone who was not directly involved in the research. This is why he labeled the article journalistic malpractice. But he has no problem with articles that are completely biased the opposite direction if he agrees with them. They don't need to present the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis as potentially good science. He's perfectly happy when they portray that as just total pseudoscience, no debate involved there, no controversy, Just they're just full of crap and a bunch of liars. He's perfectly happy with articles like that that come out of his group of friends and whatnot. But when other people do it and, and point the fingers the opposite direction, oh, that's just journalistic malpractice. The next thing to mention is John is well outside of his wheelhouse when he criticizes this journalist. Jamie Carter is considered one of the foremost astronomical journalists on the planet. When it comes to comets, Mr. Carter is far more educated than Professor Hoops. So when John comes in here telling Jamie, oh, this is the guy you need to be citing is Mark Boslow and Wikipedia is the source you should be using, it's pretty hilarious because John's not in a position to be telling this guy what to think. Jamie has vastly more experience and is much more of an expert when it comes to astronomy than John is. John only knows what he's learned from Mark to debunk the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. So this is pretty hypocritical, especially when you consider that he's like, oh, I'm going to fight pseudo-archaeology by using my own form of uh, you know, pseudo-astronomy here. And by, and by pseudo-astronomy, what I'm saying is he, he's going to tell an astronomer what to think with his archaeologist's opinion. It's kind of hilarious. But if you think that that's a bad one, you wait, till, wait till you see what I have to say next. This, this is just ridiculous. This is, this is grossly, grossly corrupt. When John complained about the Forbes journalist not using Wikipedia, the reason was readily apparent to me. John has spent a very long time making certain that those Wikipedia pages on pseudo-archaeology and lots of other affiliated ones are exactly the way that him and his friends want them. A lot of these pages are locked to other editors, and he is proudly a major contributor to a lot of these, including the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis page. Big surprise. So he doesn't want this unbiased, impartial opinion to go out into the world. Oh, no, 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 no. He wants this very carefully cold and selected place that him and his buddies have hedged off and made certain all says things a certain way. He wants that. 
to be what people use instead of peer-reviewed published papers that happen to disagree with what he has to say. And the, the, the results of John and his friends editing these things is horribly apparent. Like, look at the paper, or excuse me, look at the Wikipedia entry for the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. That whole entire thing, it reads with Weasley language all the way through. It never once says the evidence is. It's their proponents will accept this is the evidence. They believe that this is the evidence. It's all kinds of very carefully worded things to make it a constantly, this isn't real. Constantly, this is fake. And that is the result of him and his buddies selectively editing it. He's done this to Graham Hancock's page. He's done this to numerous pages all over Wikipedia. He, he, he linked down below to his page and you can, the fingerprints are all over the place of his editing. A lot of it's just him teaching his students, which is, you know, maybe not too bad. Uh, maybe it's really bad if he's teaching them to do this kind of crap. But what it really comes down to, to me, where it's really the funniest, is that he's kind of, I mean, I hate to say it because it makes me sound ancient, but he's kind of a boomer about this, right? I mean, good God, man, it makes me sound ancient. Well, I am ancient, so it just makes me look kind of weird, but... He's a boomer about this. It's like I say, it's like it's been a long time since people really trusted Wikipedia. 10, 15 years. I mean, we've all seen like celebrities get messed with, mogged as the kids like to call it, where they go to their pages and edit it to make it say all kinds of stupid stuff. People will go to just random pages and just insert something just to get a screenshot and make a meme out of it. We all know this. We all know that some pages that are hotly contested are hotly contested and you can't really trust it any more than you can trust a news article from freaking one side or the other. These are it, Wikipedia has lost its reputation of being an unbiased source like a decade ago. So it's kind of hilarious that John plays his hand so openly here. I mean, he's like, why don't they use Wikipedia? This doesn't make any sense. It's like, dude, go touch grass, man. Nobody uses Wikipedia. The very fact that you, as a scientist, are telling a journalist, you don't need to use peer-reviewed papers, you need to use Wikipedia, should give you pause to stop and be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't press enter and, and send this tweet out into the world because this looks really stupid or one-sided and biased, corrupt. But, you know, I, I got one more thing I gotta say about this really quick. I've gone to bat for archeologists a lot since I've made this channel. And I know a lot of archeologists who watch this are going, ah, you son of a bitch, you're a traitor, whatever. Look, I have numerous times outright mocked the idea of archeologists hiding giant bones in the Smithsonian and stuff like that, right? Well, there's kind of a problem here. We're repeatedly seeing this kind of thing where you are, you've got archaeologists that are deliberately trying to cultivate a narrative that is not accurate, it's not in line with reality. They try to change, they, in this case, we've got him trying to make sure that they don't get the right information from the scientists that are involved, it's only from the scientists that John wants them to see. In, in, in other cases that we've talked about, we've got, anyway, I won't get into everything, but my point is, is that we have situations where scientists archaeologists are hiding information about this stuff they're smoking guns of them telling fibs not quite releasing all of the accurate information into the public and at that point you make it awfully damn hard for a guy like me to stand there and say anything positive about the idea of you guys hiding stuff oh no that couldn't be archaeologists couldn't be hiding giant bones like man i don't believe that there were giant bones but you know what I can't say that y'all wouldn't effing hide them if you had the chance, because at this point, <laughs> at this point, some of you are willing to tell people to go to Wikipedia over a peer-reviewed paper if you don't like what the peer-reviewed paper says. You don't trust somebody with credentials in that stuff to actually know what's going on if they disagree with you. It's disgusting. So... Anyway, I want to say a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys help make this happen. Um, things are going to keep on going. Go subscribe to uh, Matt Beal at Limitless. I'm going to be doing a podcast with him here in about a month. I've got a road trip coming up with my son. We're going to stop at a few of the places along the Scablands, too. And I've got a video coming down the pipes about the whole Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis myself. And here this Sunday, I should have a video up about one of the most popular maps in the old alternate history sphere on a deep dive into a micro level, not the big macro level like we're used to seeing it. So it will be some pretty novel stuff. Hope to see you then. Thank you very much and have a good evening.